eights, nines, and ones, I am head to toe excited to highlight our experience today as the body-centered humans. I'm digging into the things that we so keenly attune ourselves to and the patterns that are forged in the way that we think, feel, and act. So let's dig. We learn from the Enneagram that as humans, we function through three centers of intelligence. These centers are the ways that we perceive or take in, process, each with its own unique logic, and express ourselves kinesthetically in the ways that we move, sense, and feel. When we think of body, we think of movement, motion. And when we experience the body as a center of intelligence, an instinct itself, this includes our motor center. So for types in the body triad, as we take in information from our environments, the thoughts that we produce, no matter how quickly they occur, create an impulse or an instinct to take action. Sometimes this is easier to understand when you contrast it against the other centers of intelligence, but I wanted to give each of them their own specific airtime. This impulse to act can be an incredibly valuable quality or guide to taking right action in our lives, but the misuse or careless use of the motor center can just as easily result in disproportionate impulsive behavior or complete inertia as you'll see in the different body types. And we've got two numbers in this triad, the eight and the one that can't afford to be misrepresented, and the nine who typically has to work a lot harder to identify with their body. So hopefully I can do us all justice. Eights, you're up. We know based on their unconscious motivator that eights focus a ton of their attention on power and control. They're sizing people up into two opposing categories, determining if they are weak or strong. That means they are very tuned in and aware to who has power and who doesn't. And for those who do, they are conscious of whether or not they are wielding it well or misusing it. The eight's attention is also on the big picture. An average eight can really feel burdened by having to deal with details, since all of that forward momentum within their body is not typically something that they like to interrupt. And eights are often referred to as an unstoppable force. Are you hearing all of the consistent language around movement? Speaking of an unstoppable force, eights reactive energy allows them access to their feelings of anger more readily than any other type. They can feel consumed by it. Really, if you ever get the chance to talk to an eight, ask them how they experience or feel anger within their body. But their gut reaction to their own feelings, the unconscious intent at that point, is to avoid the feelings that are making them feel weak within, and of course to cover up any signs of them so that they won't be perceived as vulnerable by others. Consequently, when it comes to their patterns of thinking and feeling, eights are very black and white in their thinking and resistant to the orders of others that might indicate that they are being controlled. So when it comes to their behavioral patterns, we can see an intimidating demeanor and a kind of fearlessness in their speech and in their actions. Now, eight is one of the numbers that I do not want to misrepresent. Power to them is something that should be used for justice, not control over. An eight's desire for power and control is intended to ensure that injustices don't keep them or others down, but it doesn't really look like that to a lot of other types. These body-centered individuals look like forces to be reckoned with that not a lot of other types feel willing or even capable to take on. Eights have the energy and stamina to take on big things, whether we're talking about tasks and projects or conflict itself. They have intense work ethics and despise having limitations put upon them, especially vulnerable emotions emotional experiences that ask or demand them to slow down. Their center of intelligence or instinctive behavior is to step up, step in, put things in motion, and move things forward. Now for nines. I mentioned earlier that nines actually have a difficult time tuning into their own body. As a body-centered type on the Enneagram, unfortunately that means that they can very easily be out of touch with their own selves and instincts. And as their unconscious motivator tells us, they desire peace and harmony at all costs. Well, what that usually costs them is a clear sense of self. They stay focused on others and the environment trying to be accommodating. In order to achieve any of this, they have to go to sleep to their own feelings and instincts. They repress and often dissociate from their own experience of emotions to avoid conflict or creating a feeling of separateness between them and others. And their thoughts tend to be unclear, jumbled, or cluttered. As they consistently check out of their own body's experience, they can busy themselves in their mind trying to anticipate other people's thoughts, feelings, needs, and desires. So much so that a nine can believe that those are their thoughts. Their thinking merges with others, and as the saying goes, nines aren't necessarily sure where someone ends and they begin. 
How that plays out in their behaviors can actually look really peaceful. They can look emotionally steady on the surface. They're accommodating, they're flexible with plans, and are content to follow structures and rules that more or less think for them and tell them what to do. Now, all of this is true at times, because anyone who's on that extreme of a pendulum eventually swings it the other way, where we see nines passive-aggressively resist everything we just talked about. That repression of anger comes out sideways, sometimes even in fits of fury that scare everyone around them, including themselves. So where is the body language of movement when we talk about nines? It's in inaction or reluctance to take action. It's resistance to change, numbing out, or narcotizing behaviors that require little to no movement of the body itself. The nine experiences an inertia, a laziness of mind and body, until it's met with a force that moves it. If you're enjoying the Enneagram content on my page, it would be greatly appreciated if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you ring the bell, you'll be personally alerted to when new videos go up. I thank you for supporting the growth of my channel and the community that we're building here. And now my people, ones. This is where our attention goes. I actually got that sign long before I discovered the Enneagram. That's how much of a one I've grown into over the years. Like eights, we are naturally black and white in the ways that we filter our experiences of this world. We fixate on right and wrong, appropriate and inappropriate, and good lord are we aware of errors and inefficiencies. So in terms of our feelings, we are very aware of our feelings of anger in the form of resentment. No one gets irritated like a one. Resentment tends to leak out from our pores and we can experience almost an unbearable annoyance and impatience with others. But internally, we've assessed those feelings as inappropriate or bad, so we take it and we shove it down into that belly where we feel the fire like eights do, but we channel it into a different kind of behavior, one that we deem more acceptable. But inside, we feel that pull to act, that forward motion with the body, and we're wrestling with it until that impulse or instinct is effectively restrained or tamed. When it comes to patterns of behavior then, in an unhealthy or average one, you can see a lot of criticism, rigidity, and adhering to rules. The deep desire is to be responsible and ethical and to prove that we're working hard, as hard as we wish others would to improve this world. But our body-centered experience can be as misinterpreted as an intimidating eight with our high expectations and insistence that there's a right and a wrong way to do things. We, like eights, feel the compulsion to move forward and do, but we focus on conducting our behavior in a more disciplined manner as we move. Each of these Enneagram types processes life through the body or gut first. It's our go-to. And as a result, we experience the emotions of anger or rage and express it in three very distinct ways according to our unconscious motivators and their basic fears. 